do not exist in a vacuum. They exist within the rest of society and within the rest of the age groups. And so I think um, it's important. And in fact, we are happy that uh, in this um, workshop, we not only have youth, but all um, age groups represented. Um, next, I'll just go right to introducing the uh, panelists that we have with us today. Uh, we are lucky to have um, five uh, people who will uh, discuss with us uh, some of the issues affecting youth and internet governance. Uh, to my extreme right is Raquel Gato. She's a Brazilian lawyer currently working in, at the Brazilian Network Information Center, NIC.br, and she's also in the ISOC uh, Brazil chapter. She's an assistant professor, yes, as young as she is, <laughs> uh, in uh, states theory and political sciences at the law school in the uh, PUCSP. Uh, she's also an author and um, a very good speaker. She's been involved in this process since YSIS. Um, with us again is somebody who's um, uh, seated at the remote moderator's uh, seat, but she's a uh, part of us. Uh, she's uh, Ginger. I'm calling her Ginger because She's my friend on Facebook, so we speak on a first name basis. But <laughs> her name really is uh, Virginia Park. Uh, although she was born in the United States, uh, she's lived in uh, Venezuela for a long time. Uh, there she is. <laughs> uh, uh, she's a, an, an educator and administrator by profession. And um, she's the um, internet uh, Governance Capacity Building Coordinator for Diplo Foundation. I'm sure most of you young people know about the Diplo Foundation courses. And then um, uh, next to me is uh, Tim Davis. Um, Tim is the founder and co-director of Practical Participation, a UK-based uh, consultancy specializing in civic engagement, youth participation, and uh, collaborative technology. Uh, other than that, I'd like to mention that um, a team is uh, also um, a member of the Dynamic Coalition on Youth in this uh, Internet Governance Forum. And then uh, to my left is Kelly Coleman. She's a young journalist from Imagining the Internet, uh, which is a project of Elon University. Um, uh, she participated in the youth panel in the IGF USA. Uh, she's very young and um, quite an excellent woman. She's a blogger too. And then next to Kelly is uh, Peter. Um, I cannot pronounce his second name. I think it's majestic. Uh, but Peter is the president of the European Youth Forum. Um, he has a lot of interest in uh, European politics, world affairs, youth participation, new media, sustainable development, reading, traveling, jogging, tennis, table, um, electronic darts, and so on. So uh, without much further ado, I'll just ask uh, Raquel to take it up. Thank you, Grace. And I must start just telling you some background from this uh, to be chosen as the first speaker. I lost the lunch, which was organizing the, the workshop, so they decided I should be the one. <laughs> so, no. Uh, so, as great as Tim once said, uh, I'm getting old, uh, we are getting old <laughs> to talk about youth, but uh, the spirit kept the same. And uh, as we approach the, the 30s, uh, I thought that for those uh, beautiful young and very shine, they are shining on the, the sessions that have almost half my age. Uh, what I could bring on uh, is some of the experience, how I got involved, how I started, and um, so th this is what I, I would like to share with you today. First, uh, uh, touching the, the title of this workshop, uh, I think that what a youth can bring and needs 
to, to be involved in internet governance is to bring their voice. And for that, I address five points that I will uh, go on as I, I tell the history. This is more uh, history telling, <laughs> personal history telling, uh, to show you some of the points uh, you can be involved and internet governance can change you. So uh, when I started uh, with this, it was on, I, I had 19 uh, years old and I was an intern in the, in, uh, law school and I was working with intellectual property and we had by the time a lot of problems with domain names and uh, trademarks so I, I start digging in and I think this is the first point y you, you need to have the will you need to have be curious to to understand because I start uh, uh, studying and I start researching. Uh, after all, who rules the internet? <laughs> because uh, we, we talk about domain names, we talk about trademarks, but who, who makes the rules, who solve those problems? And then you got to internet and to internet governance. And uh, just after I graduated, uh, I, I started my master's degree on international law. Uh, addressing those issues exactly. So, because when I started uh, checking that there were multiple organisms, there is this principle, multi stakeholderism. Oh my God, but in international law, we learn that the traditional and uh, the representatives are the governments in international field. And how, how come we, we have several actors uh, discussing, deciding, and for example, standards which are decided in IETF, they are made by the community and they are used uh, worldwide. H how, how is that happening? So I start uh, researching about it. And uh, we, we had the IGF, uh, the second IGF in 2007 in Brazil. And this is actually my third point, uh, my, my second point, sorry, <laughs> which are local meetings. Because uh, with the preparatory uh, process for the IGF in Brazil, we had some meetings and uh, I got a small note in, in a, an academic newspaper that a meeting, a preparatory meeting was going to happen. And I went there and then I met several actors who explained uh, what it was IGF and uh, the, the WISIS process. And uh, I, I submitted my, my master's degree proposal to uh, the, the, a meeting, academic meeting that happens one day before the IGF, which is GigaNet. And they accepted, so I went. And then I got involved here and never stopped. I've been in all IGFs, try to be here every year. Uh, so uh, this is the importance also to bring uh, those uh, uh, issues, those uh, debate to, to your local community because this is the way you can also involve youth. It's difficult to bring you all here. I'm sure that uh, from ChildNet, many more could come and many more would like to come. And this is also a, a worry. I, I, um, in NIGF Brazil, I also met the Diplo booth and got involved with Diplo. So this is my third point because uh, as I was trying to understand this, this whole and this big, huge um, word that is internet governance, uh, I start digging on capacity building. And I started with Diplo Foundation, an uh, internet capacity building course. And uh, this also opened up a lot of doors uh, not only broad knowledge, but a huge network. I think most of us were here. I can tell Grace, Tim, were, and Ginger, who is the coordinator. So I, I'm, I'm aware I have only five minutes, and I'm, I'm going to uh, short this up. And from Diplo community, from the interaction with others, we start also uh, being uh, aware or uh, starting to, to debate the concern to bring, uh, how to bring more people. As I was saying, uh, you, you can come. Uh, what, what could be done? And we started debating about remote participation. And uh, there were now the remote participation working group, which uh, started and pushed uh, f with the IGF secretariat this uh, remote we, we have today, the hubs model uh, that can also bring to local uh, communities the content, the debate, and bring their voices in. So I'm not addressing exactly youth, but 
uh, I'm sure that youth is uh, represented. We have connected the Syracuse Students Hub, and I'm, I'm sure they, they are glad to be following and to be learning. And this is the fourth point. Uh, about e-participation, about inclusiveness and openness. And I should say, I, I can help myself, <laughs> that we had earlier a meeting about e-participation with a lot of uh, youth involvement, and I'm sure Tim can also talk more about the use uh, we, we had on Etherpad, and we created a document online, and many people were uh, making their inputs on time, just there, people that were in the room, people that were remotely participating. And this is a, a, a huge change. Uh, I think I've never seen in IGF uh, this kind of collaborative and uh, simultaneous uh, creation of a document. So if you want, we, are going, we, we have some copies and we are going to also advertise that later. So, and the, 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 the last point is, um, as I, I got more involved, uh, as I got my work in Nick BR, as uh, the career started to, to merge more into internet governance, it's also important to also have the mentoring. Uh, I, I had this experience, for example, in, in ICANN, I'm talking about another fora, but it's under uh, internet governance umbrella, uh, because when you are a newcomer and you arrive on those meetings and you, you see so many people, some know each other, they are talking about the issues that you can follow, uh, you need someone to help you uh, understand uh, what they are talking about. We are talking about Tunis agenda. What is it? <laughs> So uh, this is important also to have this mentoring, this preparation uh, to, to, be, uh, to be ready, to be safe, not safe, but secure during uh, your participation. So I, I think those are where some of the issues I would like to, to bring on. We talk some of them uh, on the Youth Dynamic Collision. Uh, I'm sure you are uh, mostly invited to, to come and to join. Uh, the ways we could build on IGF specifically the dynamic collision to to build uh, tools, capacities, and uh, everything else you might think it's necessary to uh, to get more involved, to get learning, and so on. So I think it was it. I hope it's useful to you, and I will be glad to take questions and help further. Thank you. You're very inspiring. Um, first, we'll uh, listen to the other speakers. I'll invite uh, Tim Davis, and then later we'll have a session where everybody, anybody can ask questions. I didn't realize I was next. So um, I'll try and uh, work from the notes I have here. So I think when we talk about youth, we've already been discussing here before the session started that youth is a label that covers a broad range of, of people in some countries and contexts, it means under 18s. Globally, it's often a broader age range, up to 30 or, or beyond. So I like to be, be clear in talking about children, young people, and young adults when I'm discussing uh, the youth factor in internet governance. Children broadly being, although these categories again vary from country to country, up to 13. Uh, young people, maybe a 13 to 19. And young adults, those who are maybe coming here as university students, as young uh, entrepreneurs, as employees of organizations, uh, as members of civil society. Uh, networks as well, and, and that can be people at all those categories. So I think we have to be really clear about children, young people, young adults when we discuss uh, the uh, youth factor. And we also have to recognize, to com complexify that even further, that youth have many different identities. Uh, I'm a young person, or a young adult, I should say, I'm a young adult uh, who runs a business, who's involved in civil society networks, who has particular identities, particular national identities, particular political uh, views and ideologies. And, and there's as much diversity within youth as there is uh, between youth and other actors. So again, we have to really be critical about what is the youth factor. But when we focus on children, young people, young adults, I want to focus on uh, uh, particularly children and young people in internet governance. I started out my engagement as a 16-year-old in, in children's rights campaigning, and I think actually whilst we've got good at the IGF at hearing from young people and young adults, uh, we still uh, are not listening to children's voices enough. Uh, and I think for both young people uh, and children, there are a number of key 
challenges. There is structural disadvantage in the way these processes are set up. There's less time to become equipped and to know how to speak up in these meetings. Ginger was sharing earlier that uh, coming to IG for the first time, it was maybe two or three years before she felt confident to speak up in panels, and I think that would be true of many people. So for young people who are moving through those age categories rapidly, whose lives are going through many transitions of school to university, to jobs, to, to voluntary work, to other work, uh, having the chance and the time to consistently engage with these issues uh, is a structural disadvantage that we need to address with structural uh, solutions. We also need to recognize there are fewer uh, resources uh, to financially support young people to take part. People. Uh, maybe giving up uh, their, their work income to come and attend here, not being funded by their, their workplaces. So we have to look at some of those structural issues. But I also think uh, more challenging uh, is the institutionalized and internalized discrimination that we still have towards children uh, and young people. And we have to constantly challenge our, ourselves on that. Uh, uh, Adam Fletcher, uh, who uh, writes a, a US blog, uh, The Free Child Project, talks about adultism. Uh, as, as a form of discrimination, as, as, as serious as sexism uh, and racism. Uh, and uh, I certainly do hear uh, comments uh, throughout IGF that, that are adultists, that are uh, uh, betraying a discrimination towards young people as young people. So I think we have to really challenge ourselves on that. I, I believe children have a right to be listened to. I don't just believe that. It's enshrined in the UN Convention on the Rights of the Child, a right to be listened to in every decision that affects them, and that creates for me an obligation to listen, and to listen deeply, suspending my own interpretations of what I think they're saying, uh, and listening to what is being said, and, and actually taking that forward. So uh, I, I, I believe uh, children and young people of all ages uh, can express their views on issues that affect them, and the internet, as we've heard, is an issue that affects from, from naught upwards in many, many contexts. So I might not uh, expect a six-year-old to be able to tell me the exact policy details and institutions I should go to, to to solve a problem, and I don't expect most 60 year olds to do that either. Um, but I do know that a six year old or a seven year old can tell me what they enjoy online and what they don't enjoy online. And I know also that I should be open to hearing ideas from them that cut through the organizational nonsense, the political blockages, the individual ambition that, that, that mean many people are, are not going to the best ideas uh, in these solutions. Uh, and we should be open to hearing ideas from children and young people that, that actually give us real insight into how to solve IG problems. So is the youth factor counting in internet governance? Well, I think we've still got a long journey in society generally to making sure we end discrimination against children and young people challenging structural and attitudinal barriers, but uh, yes, the youth factor counts. Youth is uh, a foundational part of discussions of social issues here in internet governance. So we've not only got a big challenge, it's a vital challenge for us to, to engage with, to, to build on, and I think amazing progress has been made over the last uh, five or six years since the WISIS process onwards. Um, but we are contending constantly uh, with those structural challenges that mean uh, we're growing older uh, and other people getting involved have to fight every year for the resources to participate uh, and have many other things going on in their lives. So we've really got to keep working hard on it. Thanks, Tim. Um, I'm glad you've answered the question uh, whether the youth factor is counting. I hope that um, later you'll tell us ways in which we could make the youth factor uh, count more. But right now, let me just um, invite Kelly to make a presentation. Hello, everyone. Um, so I have notes, so it's going to sound very wordy um, rather than kind of free and open, but that's just how I have to operate. Um, one thing I'll say, though, is that um, it's been really amazing to be here and see just how much um, youth from East Africa are invested in the future of the internet, particularly when related to access. It's inspiring and I feel is such a clear representation of how important it is to young people. Um, it means connection to the world, it means opportunity to learn and grow, and it means opportunity for creativity, expression, and innovation. We understand this, we as in youth, and um, one thing I will say is this is definitely coming from my own perspective as a young person from the United States. Um, but we understand this and we understand um, technology. We understand how it works, we adopt the newest technologies and as they come and interact with them, um, 
But um, I understand that we need to worry about those who take advantage of the internet, um, which is to be expected. Um, we need to consider ways to regulate, maybe, and legislate, maybe. But um, here at IGF, youth, are, uh, youth and protecting them, thinking about the way we use the internet has been discussed a lot. Um, but youth themselves don't know what's being discussed about them here. Um, in fact, I would say that many of us as young people know little about most of the issues being discussed here today uh, and this week. Why is that? Um, I'm currently enrolled in a course called The Future of the Internet, where I'm learning about privacy, policies related to the internet, um, issues that are hugely important to me as a user of the internet. Um, and I'll tell you, it's a bit frustrating to me that I'm just now learning this. Um, you know, as a young person, I feel that I've been kind of left out in some ways. I've been excluded from sort of knowing about these important issues, particularly related to policy. I mean, I didn't even know that these things were in existence, if that makes sense. Um, so personally, I believe that before we begin creating more legislation, let's take a moment to educate our young people and then include young people, the technology users, uh, in the policy process. And, you know, I've talked a lot about educating young people at this, uh, in the panels that I've sat on um, so far this week. And so those who have been present have heard me say this a lot, and I'll continue to do so. Um, because I often feel that we as young people are pegged as lazy, uninterested, but isn't it true? I don't know. Maybe that's just my, that's my opinion. But I also believe that we just don't know. That's how I feel. I feel that there are so many things discussed at this conference that I didn't even know about before I started taking this course. And now that I know, oh my gosh, am I interested? Oh my gosh, do I want to be invested? Um, there are many things I've been learning in my course. I'm just saying, I already said this, but I'm going to say it again because it goes with my script. Um, there are many things I've been learning in my course that I really care about, but if I hadn't randomly selected to participate in this class, there is no way I could care about because I didn't know. And, you know, those who have heard me, um, as a young person, I feel that my peers, in a lot of ways, are being deprived from knowing about the policies that are being discussed that can impact them in incredible ways as Internet users. But I think we, as young people, who utilize the newest technologies as they come, that stuff we do know about, um, should then be included in discussion with policymakers, educating them um, on how those laws will impact creativity and innovation, impact what is to come from a perspective of a young user us utilizing that technology all the time. Um, also, I feel that if more people were educated, perhaps more would be present at these types of functions, um, participating more openly. Um, so for me, it's not necessarily about legislating or regulating. It needs, I think, the big thing for me is education, a two-way street, educating young technology users on issues related to the future of the internet, um, issues that we're talking about this week, but also involving young people um, to share with policymakers about um, their sort of opinions um, on, on the way that they will be in, impacted. Um, so I was asked to kind of come here today and contribute, um, you know, my opinion about the policies that I believe should be in place um, so as to not stifle innovation and creativity in, in, um, for youth um, in the years to come. But to me, um, the education is one of the first big steps in that. Thanks. Thank you, Kelly. Um, I think uh, so far in the panel, the point that is being reiterated is about uh, capacity building and mentorship, that um, as we move to the future of uh, internet governance, there's need to uh, fill in the gap because um, there are people who, so to speak, are retiring from their post and there are other people who are willing to take up that uh, post, but some proactive um, approaches need to be taken so that um, we can um, have a better future. Um, Next, I'll invite uh, Peter, who's the um, president of the European Youth Forum. Thank you very much, Grace. And I feel uncomfortable when you continue pointing out my function because in the IGF, the beauty of the IGF is that there's a multi-stakeholder process. It doesn't matter who you are, who you represent, but what you say uh, about things. Um, so yeah, I'm going to try to bring in a bit of a different perspective. Uh, into this, the perspective from a youth organization that tries to focus on how we could actually ensure continuity and sustainability of something that we're doing. We as an advocacy platform and a capacity building platform for organizations in Europe do that constantly on several areas, but new media as a topic is relatively new for us. Uh, and there, it's many ways, like Kelly was mentioning, you don't simply know about it yet, you are not informed sufficiently about it yet, and that's what's happening to our members a bit. 
our member organizations are still stuck in the basic fundamental question of internet governance. Is it more than just uh, a communication tool, a new media? So that's what we're trying to do within our forum at the moment because we have been taking part in IGFs, we have been taking part in Eurodic, we have been sending individuals to these meetings, we have been sending youth representatives to these meetings. They have come and gone, uh, they have given feedback, but there was a lack of uh, sustainability of that. So we're trying to approach that uh, exact question. As I think it's something that is also crucial for the IGF as a, as a whole in the next five years. So first, if I look at the question, did IGF have any impact on youth? I would say absolutely. I mean, in many ways. Just as I mentioned, the nature of the multi-stakeholder approach that offers a possibility both for individual young people to speak up and be present. And we have seen this all over uh, this IGF, at least from my perspective, uh, the great kids that, and I say kids because they are <laughs> in comparison to me, uh, kids who are simply brilliant in putting forward their own ideas, their own perceptions. But what is also important to bring in youth organizations to take part in this and have their voice heard. I think it's crucial to raise the voice of youth as a whole in the IGF, but also to ensure the sustainability of youth representation, to start asking questions about youth representation. Um, and of course, I think there is a role to play with the Dynamic Youth Coalition that we have and a space where we can tackle that question, but I think it's important that we start raising it. Because I can speak as Peter, who is interested in new media, but that's just one voice. If I speak as Peter, as representing a European Youth Forum, I have the right and duty to speak on behalf of tens of millions of young people in Europe. They might even know, not know that I can speak on their behalf. Technically, I'm speaking on behalf of these young uh, British citizens here because British Youth Council is our member. Uh, but you know, it's the same problem of representativity that we have in representative democracy. Uh, Barack Obama might be speaking uh, on behalf of all Americans even though not everybody knows or agrees to, to that. So that's something I want to bring forward as a, a very important thing to consider. Then the biggest impact I think the IGF and Eurodig had for us as an organization and our representatives was simply raising awareness about the topics that are out there. By participating, we suddenly notice there are so many things that we feel provoked by, that we feel touched by, that we are the users of the internet and we do have a say and we want to get involved. So it was a bit of a, usually we are always crying out, <coughs> we want to say something and we have things to say. This time it was more about we were put in a process and then we s saw that actually, wow, this touches us directly and we need to have a say on this and then we're trying to find a way uh, how to raise our voice and what that voice should be. And one such area is e-participation. Uh, we have been advocating a lot in Europe to make sure that internet governments focuses on providing the possibilities for e-participation to young people, as this has been proven to be an innovative approach to participation in decision making as such. But e-participation can only be effective if it's accompanied by offline participation, and there we want to pair it with the work of youth organizations done on the ground. Because if we want to educate, if we want to inform, if we want to raise awareness, this needs to be a constant process. And we have channels, peer-to-peer -peer channels, that are in youth organizations. Of course, there are others, and every individual here can go uh, online and, and raise awareness about these things to his or her colleagues and friends. But youth organizations have already those uh, channels existing, and they can use them. Then what have we learned so far? I think that the big, we have learned that the biggest problem is to ensure a meaningful participation of young people and youth representatives in the IGF and similar forums. Not to showcase young people, but to really make sure that what they are saying is coming either from their personal experience that is valid in itself, or it's coming from a process that has been debated and are then speaking on behalf of, of their colleagues, be it from a school or be it in a youth organization. But of course, this is also linked to certain barriers, already Tim mentioned financial structural barriers in bringing people in, bringing them here physically. But I think it's also important that we have a lack of information and knowledge which is linked to digital literacy or lack of it in terms of being able to um, participate remotely. I think it's a great tool that we have, remote participation. But we don't necessarily know it or we don't know how to use it or when to access it or I have to admit that when I Last year when I was first uh, hearing about IGF and I was encouraged to do and be part of a hub and all these things like, what? I, I don't know, I don't understand what you're saying. How does that work? I was 
feeling um, that, no, I'm just going to leave it, you know, because I have so many other things at the same time. So we have to address that, how we can overcome those things. Uh, then I think something that was mentioned in the previous panel over again is that we shouldn't treat internet issues as youth issues, focusing constantly, yeah, let's protect the children and youth. Uh, but we have to treat these issues as issues on which children and young adults can have a say and should have a say on. So to bring in their perspective of these topics. Um, and then lastly, what I think should be improved in the near future or could be improved is one also being mentioned already a lot, capacity and competence building of young people and youth representatives, especially with the mentioned preparatory meetings. This is something we have done in Europe thanks to our member organization who took up on themselves to find the funding and then to create the space and even sometime elbow their way through with the Eurodig and, <laughs> and Ginger remembers that. Uh, <laughs> but you know, in order to really create spaces to raise your voice. Um, and then to better support the participation of youth in the different IGF formations and encourage and support long-term involvement of youth as a stakeholder. And I think we should look into how we can further develop the Dynamic Coalition on Youth, something we have discussed this morning in terms of one option that came out. Do we want to focus as everyone who is involved in that Dynamic Coalition on Youth on one particular topic that we want to say this is important for us for next year's IGF? We will, of course, have a say on other things, but is it one topic that we really want to push and create like a network of young people and youth representatives around the world who should focus on that? Or simply by um, better coordinating ourselves and working throughout the year? Thanks. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, <laughs> Um, I also get that um, there is a, an IGF uh, culture that has a language, that has uh, ways of doing things, and um, the youth can also be part of this culture. They can learn this language and they can also uh, engage because um, this is our future. The internet is our future and um, we have the biggest stake in the future. Um, Next, I'll invite Ginger, who has been uh, in this process for quite a long time and who's observed a lot, and um, I'm sure she has a lot to advise us on. I, I don't know if I have a lot to advise you on, but I can talk. <laughs> um, I would like to mention, I, you, you, I think, has everyone here heard the term digital divide? The, the way uh, tech can divide civilizations and groups of people as well as bring them together. I would think, think that one thing that's really cool about the internet is that it has helped us to minimize the age divide. Because I, I have to admit, I identified with, with Raquel, with, with every single speaker when they, when they came on, because as I came, yes, I've been in, in IG, but when I started in IG, the reason I got started in IG is that I was a member of the United Nations Association of Venezuela as a human rights defender. They needed a translator. I speak English as well as Spanish. I'm, I work in Venezuela. Um, so I started getting these documents on WISIS, on the World Summit for the Information Society, and translating them because Venezuela was a member of the task force on WISIS. So my only qualification to get involved in internet governance was that I spoke English. So if Kelly says she was like, I don't even know what it is, and I didn't have a clue, that is how I got involved with Diplo Foundation. It was because I was on a task force in the World Summit for the Information Society, and I didn't have a clue what it was. I happened to see a call for applications for Diplo Foundation, and believe me, I wasn't in the age group. I wasn't. I, I'm a, I was born in the U.S. I wasn't. I didn't have any of the qualifications. But I told them, "You guys have to help me," and uh, Diplo Foundation did let me in, and I did take the course, and I have a little bit more idea what I'm talking about. But it's not that much different from any one of you who step in. I, I didn't have a clue when I started, and as Tim said, I, it took me years before I would really stand up and talk, but I did find that the people who had been around a little longer, if you stop them in the corridor and ask them, they will help you. Now, when I say that the Internet's a great equalizer for age, um, it, okay, so it does have a weakness. It does mean that older people can stalk in, in chat rooms and things, but it also means that older people can get online and 
and be involved, it means that you can get online without any prejudice because we don't know. When you make a statement or send an input to the IGF secretariat, nobody knows how old you are. Now, I could say, um, as a matter of fact, if you're wondering what I'm doing on this panel, I do think that I am younger than anyone in this room. Why? Because I have been young for longer than any of you. <laughs> so, yes, I may be four times as old as you, but <laughs> I am younger. Um, I do think we have to realize that young issues affect all of us. You, in particular, are facing them. I, I can definitely understand the financing issue if youth aren't taken seriously and don't get involved. How can you learn? Um, but remote participation is an option that many of us, I, I live in Venezuela, getting here was not easy and was not cheap. Um, it gives us the option and the realization that the, that the IGF does not take place four days a year. The IGF takes place 365 days a year. And very, very many of us tend to think, oh yeah, uh, the, the IGF is coming up, yeah, it's coming up. If you did not, in January, write your input to the, to the secretariat, and then you complain that you didn't have a voice in setting the agenda, Give me a break. You, they ask constantly for input. That input is only done by e-participation. It is only done by email. It is then collected in uh, an open consultation in Geneva, unfortunately, but Geneva also has e-participation. And if you, and I know this because I have done it myself, I was not happy with the collaboration and the consensus document, you, as you know, by the time we get consensus, things get watered down. I wasn't happy with the statement the Internet Governance Caucus came up with. And by the way, the Internet Governance Caucus has no age limits. You guys are cordially invited. Um, the Internet Governance Caucus is an online mailing list where we discuss civil society Internet government issues. Uh, there's, it's free and open. You don't have to know anybody to get in, just sign up and you're on and, and uh, send in your, ask your questions, make your statements, make your points. I think many of you are already on it. And uh, share the, the link. Um, I was not happy with the consensus statement, so I sat down and wrote my own statement in much stronger terms. And if you read the input, the, the executive uh, summary, my statements are in there, and I'm, you know, an individual. You can do as much as you want to do, as much as you put into it, if you are willing to sit down and do the work. So through the Internet Governance Caucus, through the email, through answering all the requests for comments, you do have a voice, and we, as I say, we can't wait for everyone to put remote participation there for us if we don't get out there and participate. So I don't know if any of that made any sense, but um, just some random thoughts that might, uh, might bring us forward. So thank you. Uh, okay, thank you, Ginger. Um, I, it, thank you also for the challenge. Um, I, I hope uh, for the next uh, 365 days, uh, we'll have a lot more people from this room uh, participating. As a representative of the people in this workshop, um, we were hoping to hear something from um, the group from, oh, okay, go right ahead. Lovely. Um, I wanted to speak a little bit about some of the practical challenges of bringing young people to the IGF, if that's all right. Um, I'm Lucinda, and I'm heading up the Youth IGF project, and we've brought out eight young people who you've all seen. And I just wanted to talk about some of the background to it, um, because we hear a lot, yeah, it's really great for young people to be involved, but the reality of the situation for us is that young people in the UK are in schools most of the time of the year. 
this is our day job. We talk about internet governance and internet issues all the time, so we're very familiar with the language. We've talked a lot about how young people are using the technologies and are very familiar with it. But I still think, from my experience with them, Sorry, actually... excuse me? Yes. Um, for the sake of um, captioning, uh, please speak a little a slower. Little and slower. this goes to everybody. Sorry. Um, but from our experience, the language isn't the language that the young people are using. They're very familiar and comfortable with the technologies, but it's still a very technical and prescriptive language, and there's a lot of jargon. So we've invested a huge amount of time in our eight young people. We hold a youth camp to talk about internet governance um, and to familiarise them with the issues that they're going to be involved in. We had, I think, three-day discussions in the summer. There are also practical considerations for bringing young people to the IGF that I just want to mention. In addition to the time to prepare them, there are also child protection issues if you're taking young people away from home and away from their parents. There are also, you need to bring chaperones, you need to do risk assessments. So for our eight young people who are here, they're part of a wider party of 17 um, who have come to facilitate that. So for us as a charity, that's a huge challenge financially. Um, and we're based in the UK and we've got funding, but I'm sure for other countries there are great difficulties there. So there's been this significant input in, in terms of time and travel. And we've been in three workshops, which is fantastic, but that's just three workshops out of a plethora of many. And it's very difficult for the young people to continually be in contact during the year because they've got their schoolwork and things. So we facilitate that as much as we can. They're all fantastic learners, these young people. And in spite of what they've picked up, I still think they miss out sometimes on the wider context because they're not involved in the debates on a daily basis. And that's not a criticism of them. I just think that's the reality of the situation. I mean, a lot of us have followed it since WUSIS. For some of these guys, it was new this June to talk about. Um, so, yeah, it's been absolutely great to have them here, but I think there are some real challenges. I also think there is some opposition at the IGF. This may be a bit controversial, but I think there are some who don't want the status quo challenged and who don't want to hear from young people. But I very much take Ginger's point, actually, that we have a responsibility to chip into all the early consultations. And we're going to do that more this year to try and get young people in the main sessions, because that's where I really perceive that they've been lacking. I still think there's a huge way to go. I would like to see young people from every country in every session. I'd like to see them integrated as panellists. I'd like to see them chairing sessions. And that's something that we're going to be working towards. But it's been really great to hear from all the other panellists. Um, and we're going to facilitate some new partnerships, I think, for next year. Um, that's what we're going to work towards for Azerbaijan. And we'd really welcome talking to anyone who wants to work with us to help make that happen. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Um, is there anybody else who wanted to um, make a statement before we go to the question and answer? Okay, we'll start with the lady. Okay, um, the name is Titi, and I was, I must confess, even though I'm, I don't know, officially according to the um, the United Nations, the African Union particularly, I'm still classified as young. But I was hesitant to show up at this session, and I'll tell you why. How many people are aware that there was a WSIS at youth, or a WSIS youth caucus? Anybody on that side? Okay. So, um, while, when I walked in, I eventually won the battle with myself, and I ended up in the room because again, I'm passionate about anything young. And when I walked into the room, I said to myself, I failed. And I'll tell you why. There were two faces of the WSIS Youth Caucus, of, of the WSIS. And in each face, it took us a long time. Eventually, I think it was PrepCom 2 in 2001, when the WSIS Youth Caucus was recognized, when we went beyond the face that we are currently in, and we moved to the level where we were recognized, and we got our sentence into the declaration. Finally, that was a great achievement. Why I said that I personally think I've failed is if it comes to the Internet Governance Forum and the same challenges are being faced, then it means that 
somewhere along the line, as the person who was the last global youth caucus facilitator, enough was not done to pass on the button. Not that it wasn't attempted, and the issue around there being, you're very correct, there's a huge, huge resistance about having youth issues in the IGF right now. It wasn't that there wasn't an attempt to continue the process, but the challenges that you mentioned now, from finance to having people not necessarily being interested in having young people on panels, or not thinking we had anything great to say, because we wouldn't say the jargon, or we would say it in a confrontational way, or we would say it with too much passion, and we will cross the boundaries. But it came to the point where it became more of a, I would say, distractive issue rather than contributing to the process. And this is what I have found useful. I took a step back, and so did a couple of the other people who were with the Wissesu Caucus, and we reorientated ourselves. Where we did not want to be pigeonholed by our age. I do not like it when you pigeonhole me by my age. In the present century, my age does not define my level of knowledge. It does not define how much intellect I have or the level of understanding that I have of the issues. Absolutely not. So in as much, you understand why I had a bit of a fight with myself, in as much as it is great to be able to have a coalition on youth, I think it's very important. You need to be able to retreat, to be able to come forward, to engage. I think it's even more important to take the discussion forward where we can integrate, we can actually engage with the processes on the issue of spectrum that's going on in the workshop, the workshop next to us, being able to engage on critical internet resources in a language that will astound them. And that whether we like it or not, takes a bit more training. So to encourage those coming behind, I think I failed, but we, I don't think we failed, but you know, we need to connect the dots. And I'm willing and available to help you in any way to be able to leverage some of those relationships, taking it forward in terms of future internet governance forums. One of the most important things I think we need to do at this point is, if you're going to engage in the internet governance forum as young people, Yes, you have studies. Yes, you probably have a minute day job somewhere. Yes, there will be financial challenges. But you have to have passion for it. You have to have passion for it. And that passion is what is going to drive you. 10 years on, I can tell you that this afternoon, I was still, oh, this is Youth Caucus, how are you? Psh, even though I'm, uh, yeah, I'm over 30. Do you understand? So the, the, at the end of the day, you will have other commitments, but this is the encouragement I want to hand out to as many of you that are feeling a bit overwhelmed and unappreciated because I stood in your shoes and I still stand in them. It's this, your passion will make a way for you. And in as much as they don't want to acknowledge the fact that youth is important, we'll keep the, we'll keep the discussion and the debate open. So yes, a whole lot of encouragement. I saw the much younger ones. I think we get younger and younger by by the year, and definitely I think we're on the right track, but there's so much more we can do if you can engage more with the issues directly, concrete issues, and not necessarily keep yourself, if you look around the room, you know, it's, it's Thank not you, representative. Titi. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, at this point I'll ask uh, anybody else making a contribution to please um, take consideration of the uh, time because uh, there are a lot of people. So we'll have him and then Ali and then we'll come to you. Uh, I appreciate for giving me audience. My name is uh, Peter Adelaide from uh, Nigeria. Uh, I just want to say that Youth has to be given the practical role uh, in this uh, IGF. And uh, I want to see more of African children and young people uh, coming forward to IGF, either to WISIS also, to, to, to play a, a critical role. Because uh, we find out that most children and young people in Nigeria, they are interested, they are passionate about high city, but uh, they, they, they are counterpart in other continent are far, far, far ahead of them. So in order to catch up with one another, in order to meet up the expectation of IGF and uh, uh, WISIS process, we need to bring all stakeholders, uh, children and young people from Africa, from Europe together, so as to find a common solution to our needs. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Ali. Um, 
I'll, I'll make sure to keep it short. If you guys have any questions about anything I said, I encourage you to uh, talk to me after or tomorrow. Um, I think ways that we can engage more are making sure that the people here coming are multiple kinds of youth, the, both the consumer youth and the people creating the internet. Um, and that'll also help them when they want to engage in these concrete issues because they'll also understand them and they'll also understand when someone's talking about something that they're really interested in so they can butt in confidently. And hopefully when we educate uh, youth to prepare them to come, they can focus on a particular issue and be experts in that instead of knowing a little bit about everything. So they go to particular kinds of workshops and they can engage with quality input that will give us credibility. And uh, I, think, I, mean, I think we've done a great job of getting youth here. I understand it's insanely difficult, um, but I think those are just my comments going forward. Thank you. Hey, I'm Nicola Douglas. I'm with uh, ChildNet too. Um, I was just going to say that just this is my first week, at, um, first ever time at an IGF, and just one or two times this week, I've gotten the impression that young people being here is just a bit of a novelty to some people. That what we're saying is, you know, is only interesting because we're young people. But you know, it was a lot of what TT was saying is that, you know, I want to be listened to on these issues as a person, just in general, regardless of my age. Um, I know, and I know that I do. I may bring a fresh perspective to things because of my age, but you know, not all of what I'm saying is you know, is new. It's it's stuff that's being said already, and I just want to enforce it. Um, yeah. Thank you. Um, just before we go to the next round of questions, uh, let's hear from the remote participants. Okay. Uh, to kickstart the Q and A, we have a question from uh, students at the Syracuse University, in New York. And uh, their question is very pertinent to what has already been discussed. It's, how is the IGF raising awareness about the forum to the youth? Personally, I don't think the IGF is affecting the youth because there's very little knowledge that the event exists. Thank you. Any comments from the panel? Okay, Ginger. You'll have to excuse me for not speaking from a youth perspective. I would say that this problem exists in general. Not even my family can understand what I'm doing here in Kenya. So it's not a matter of the IGF projecting to youth what is IG, what is the IGF, and what is going on here. It's projecting it to the world and making the world interested in what IG is and how important internet governance is to each and every one of us. So I would say that everyone, young, old, medium, or middle-aged or old, we need to go out and tell our friends and our families so that they understand that it is not a matter of telling youth about the IGF, it's telling the world. Thank you. I just wanted to follow up on that because I think the criticism is correct but misplaced in who it targets. It's not to target the IGF because it's just a forum. It doesn't exist as one person. It exists as the stakeholders that are present. And this is what I was talking about in the beginning when you need to bring it back home. You need to make sure that you as a stakeholder in this go back and inform your colleagues, your organization, whoever you're representing. If it's you yourself, then you go back and you discuss it with your friends to raise awareness about it. So it's not the IGF as such because as such, it doesn't exist. It's just a collect collective of us. So I think I want to respond to that disagreeing slightly in saying uh, there are some very practical things I think the IGF can do to be better known. We believe in the power of online information, yet the IGF's web presence is, is, is very poor. It is under-resourced. It is hard to find out what's going on. It's hard to find the workshop reports from last year that can mean you turn up well informed. Uh, it's not got good open data on what's happening when. Uh, I would really challenge anyone involved as donors to the IGF to invest in improving that online presence uh, so that we can make the IGF more inclusive and to do that in a way that takes on principles of user-centered design that explains things clearly and accessibly and tests with users from across the world that do they understand what this means so we speak publicly, uh, not internally. So I think we need uh, a big investment in that digital infrastructure and I also think 
there's a, a role there to support the knowledge sharing over the years. I'd certainly, with the Youth Coalition, we've set up YCIG.org and a mailing list, and I'd invite anyone who has been involved in youth processes in the past to please, please join that and throw in your thoughts, comments at any point, but it would be great if the IGF itself was really supporting that more, because we've already had issues with uh, who's paying the server bill, it goes down because the people are changing constantly, and, and those simple things make a big difference. So can I just build on uh, and say it, it appears impossible, but I agree with both. And I think there are ways to have both uh, ideas put together. First, it should be, yes, something into IGF, but not only from IGF secretariat. If you don't have the users, if you don't have the youth, if you don't have the human resource to build on that. And uh, I I'm also addressing one of the points, uh, I'm sorry, I, I lost your name, but from the uh, Why is this Caucus? Uh, because bringing on, <laughs> again, the, the experience from the, the remote participation, in IGF Brazil, there were a huge resistance. Remote participation was canceled on the uh, on the day before the IGF uh, the day before the IGF started uh, through the chats because there were no, not enough procedures and little by little this small group and I say small group it was five six people G Ginger me Marilia Rafik Sherit I can name them in my fingers who push up uh, who start building this hubs model, who start saying, no, this is important, this can go on. And year by year, we learn something. We, we go one step further. We have small, small steps. Uh, one, uh, one time we have ch uh, the, the chat, the future, uh, the interaction. Uh, one other year, we have the remote moderator. One other year, we have the captioning. This is from last year in all sessions. So uh, each year, we go step by step. We don't have to go at all. And this is something uh, we could build on. Uh, thinking about concrete steps, if you think about the youth coalition, it is into IGF. We just need to push that. Uh, we could have, for example, uh, for the open consultations, you could work with the, this idea of local meetings, what we, what we call hubs, so you don't get lost, Mr. President. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> those, those are just local meetings. <laughs> and uh, uh, to, to get on the, uh, and online the, the, the open consultations and to get your voice there, uh, I, I've particular, I've been only in one uh, open consultation and because I was in holidays and next to the G Geneva, but <laughs> uh, I, I've been all the time online participating and even if the platform they offer don't, doesn't uh, uh, work, I use Ginger or someone else who is there and, and talk through Skype. So creating this network is also important. And uh, also, uh, I'm thinking last year, I think it was mentioned during the closing uh, remarks, but uh, to, to maybe have a, a young representative on each panel. I don't remember exactly where it was addressed, but I thought it was a good idea. So, but for that, in, in each panel, in each main session, y you could have uh, a youth representative. But for that, you need to have a resource list. And this only can be done by us. So let's not just push to the other side, but let's bring to, to us what can we do. So which are our strength areas? As I said, I came up with this intellectual property background, and maybe I, I feel more comfortable on that. Oh, or uh, those kids, oh, they're not like kids anymore. They are here, they are speaking out. And, uh, but uh, what is their interest in? Can they, they share, like in, in small groups, and uh, divide, sorry, in the small groups and create, oh, I like more this kind of uh, child protection, I like more uh, the, the mechanism of internet governance and so on. So I was trying just to, to wrap up w what Tim and Mr. President, I don't know your name, I forgot. <laughs> and uh, so they, they, they addressed and, and hope it's useful to, to bring some concrete uh, ideas to, to this workshop. Uh, thank you. So the youth, we have to remember, we are also a strength in, and we're a resource in ourselves and there's something we can do. He has a burning question and then well, we'll hear from her. Thanks very much. Um, I would just like to 
share uh, my opinion on why youth is so important. And I'll just say this in two quick brief reasons. Sorry, please introduce yourself. Oh, sorry, I'm Connor Dolby from ChildNet, sorry. Um, but I'll just quickly do brief, two brief reasons. Um, firstly, as youth, we are the future. And if we get an understanding of the internet and the kind of problems we have and the solutions we can get at an early stage, that when we grow up and we become um, um, go into government or whatever we do, we can take these ideas and push them forwards. For example, I was um, in a workshop for access and diversity, and they were talking about instead of having um, features for helping disabled people fix to them, build them into new um, software. So if we learn about that now, we could do that as we're designing them. And secondly, I would just like to say that um, as um, older generations, you can use us and use our fresh ideas to improve the internet that you use now. And you can use all our ideas and just bundle it into one and fix all the things, um, all our ideas into that one internet. Thanks. Um, Sabrina Cajoli from the Council of Europe. Um, just personal views that I felt like sharing. Um, I attended a, connect, a related workshop before, which was entitled Challenging Myth About Young People and the Internet. Maybe I'll make enemies here, but I feel like challenging myth about adults. <laughs> I think that I've heard things about um, adults' reluctance to involve children and young people. Um, I, I disagree with that. I mean, I, not all adults are like that. Uh, as Mrs. Ginger was saying in her own particular way, adults are also just younger. They are young people who have been young for a uh, longer time and can keep the spirit. Um, people can be also, like myself, former youth activists, so they, they know exactly what you're talking about. They were just in your place just a few years ago. Um, but the challenge is, but they don't necessarily know how to go around with that because as um, uh, one of the young participants said earlier, we're on the learning curve. And that's, that's true for all of us. It's uh, true for the IT technologies. It's also true for youth participation and how to make it meaningful. So I'd just like to convince you that there is not necessarily um, always reluctance to that, but maybe needs uh, a need for guidance from you guys also. Also, I've heard um, that some people or some young people are waiting or expecting to be given a chance to. Size it. I mean, you have also, you want to, be, to have an active role? Size it. That it starts like that. And as any citizen, I think that the internet is very uh, re revolutionary in that respect, that it broadens really for every citizen, no matter um, our age, the um, scope for participation in democracy and citizenship. How many of us have been directly consulted by our leaders on legislation? No one. Yet we have a, a room for direct participation on regulating the, uh, the internet. That's a huge step in my view. Just, just a brief response, absolutely. I think we have to not generalize about adults as well as we're not generalizing about uh, young people, I think a key issue here is the issue of power. And there are some people who see their role in these processes as to support good dialogue and better decision making. And there are other people who have some power and want to hold on to it and see new ideas, uh, challenges to that as a threat. And I think we have to be really critical of calling out those people who are trying to hold on to power illegitimately uh, and challenging it and really working with those who, who maybe uh, are, are there to listen to young people. Though I do think the structural disadvantage of, of youth means that it's not just saying to young people seize it. We do have to create spaces as well, offer the opportunities, speak up on people's behalf, uh, not saying uh, wait for the chance to speak always when you can speak up, do, but as, as, as moderators, as facilitators, we have to be attentive to those who might be just the hands almost up, but it's not up, and call on those hands, call on those people quicker, and just be sensitive to the structural disadvantage young people often face. My name is Anne Browse. I'm one of the chaperones. I'm Connor's teacher and have taught the other pupils here, four of them. 
Um, I just want to say that the question that we're asking this afternoon is the same question that is being asked certainly in British schools um, and has been asked for the past four years. Um, we have been reluctant to listen to the voice of students, partly because for a long time we have believed that adults know best. Um, that is changing. We are now incorporating student voice very much into our interview processes, our decision making, our school governance, um, and it is making a tremendous difference. It has taken time, but I would just encourage you to stick with this process. Um, and the important thing is that the young people and the older people, I think, are beginning to learn that no one is better. Everyone has a voice, everyone has a perspective and has something to say. And we're developing that culture of respect where we listen to each other. And the young people listen to the older people, we listen to the young people, but we take them seriously and involve them. So I would encourage you to keep going with this whole process. Uh, thank you. Um, the, the point uh, of sustainability and also the point of uh, involving ourselves in the processes uh, keeps coming back. So we have a few minutes left. We are going to uh, take, okay, also from there, but we're going to take a sort of closing remarks. We'll start first of all with the floor and then uh, anybody who has um, closing remarks. The interesting thing about this workshop is that nobody's asking questions. Everybody's giving uh, contributions. So we'll start with uh, Paul, who's the remote moderator, and then we'll come to you. Okay, I'm just going to read some comments that I've been receiving. So uh, back to Syracuse University. Uh, they're saying that I don't believe that just going back to your colleagues is good enough to attract people to participate in the IGF. I think we should be proactive in actually bringing our peers with us to these remote hub sessions. And then he goes on, I mean, the comments go on to state that we think that sending out an email to intellectual institutions to spread the word might help to get more participants. So perhaps maybe some of you may want to react to this. And uh, Milton Muller, he actually commended uh, Titi and says that uh, she emphasized that it is issues, spectrum, internet resources, etc., that people need to understand and engage with, not so much their age group. So those are just some of the remote comments. Okay, first uh, the gentleman from Africa, then the other one. <laughs> I don't know how you guessed I was from Africa. Um, my name is Davis Edaka, and I think uh, what, what, as a closing comment from, from my side, is uh, why is youth in IG important? Then let's not look at internet as a separate issue from everything else in life. Why is youth in, uh, like he said, politics important? Making movies important, making music important, making books important. If we can answer these questions, it's because the youth, I, maybe I'm semi-youth, uh, we were born or when we were growing up, the internet was part of the earth, like air or like water. So how it's governed, how it's going to be managed, how it's going to, to grow from now on to the future, you know, it's the same way they're going to tell me how water is going to be governed, how air is going to be governed from now on to the future. And I would like to have a say, like, a gentleman from the uh, UK said, we would like to have a say because whatever you teach us now about the environment, uh, once we are in power, we are going to enforce that. And whatever we say about IG today, then as we grow and become and take over power more and more, we are going to enforce those things uh, in a better way. Is openness, is, is security, is it uh, is it a, a privacy and all that? We we probably understand it from a more uh, closer perspective. So in in closing uh, remarks, what I would like this forum to take is that IG is not separate from any other issue uh, affecting everybody on earth. We, we need to uh, take it in that same way. Yeah. Hi, uh, my name is Jamil Gohir and I'm from Pakistan. Um, I won't make a closing remark, rather I would like to make an opening remark for the next one year process for IG and youth. Uh, while we are talking about IG and youth, I think we need to look at the two sides of the coin. Uh, one side is basically the inclusion of the youth, and the other side is basically the 
understanding that we have to convey to that youth that IG is a process that they need to jump in. And while we look at the two sides, we need to actually look upon uh, how we can make it more massive, more scalable, and more diversified, because I see youth from certain parts of different continents, but certain continents are totally missed. Nobody's from Asia Pacific over here. Nobody's from probably uh, Latin America as a youth. Oh, all right. So, uh, but definitely we need to look into the diversity of the youth that can be brought in, and that can only be done if we are able to think of inclusion as a whole. And then uh, we also look towards the understanding of the youth towards IG process, because as my friend mentioned over here, that we don't understand, I mean, the youth don't understand the lingo that is going on over here, but probably if you can make it more easier for them to understand that, uh, we could have more massive participation from the youth. So we need to look at both the sides. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Ginger would first like to, sorry, to address the point uh, raised by Syracuse students, and then we'll come to you. Uh, thank you. I do, I do appreciate the fact that the Syracuse students came back to their original question, and I would like to address it. Um, I understand that the IGF needs to do more, that we each need to do more, but if you think about it, you'll realize that any conference or symposium that's held does advertising. If, if I'm going to give a, a symposium on dentistry, I'm going to send out the information to people who are interested in odontology. I am not going to send it out to every person in the world. So if I have an IGF form, I'm going to send the information as widely as I possible can, possibly can, but I'm going to target the people who are interested in internet issues and internet governance. So if I'm interested in underwater basket weaving, I have to go out and look for information about underwater basket weaving, and I have to find out where it is. I would also say that Syracuse University is a mover and shaker in the world of internet governance. And that I suggest that the students take a little bit of responsibility there to find out what their university is offering, get very involved. They have Milton, for God's sake. Um, <laughs> take advantage of the, of the uh, yes, he, GigaNet. Syracuse is one of, the, one of the most important places in the U.S. for internet governance. So I commend you on the, the concern and ask you to please help us spread the word. Go home. Bring your, as they said, bring your friend in. One way of doing this is capacity building and the Internet Governance Secretariat and everyone involved is, has made a very strong point that capacity building is important. I invite you to visit the Diplo booth downstairs so that I don't have to go into any information about that. But we do have a pen drive that's available with the text, illustrations, short videos. There's a lot of information available. Stop down at our booth and then we can talk more so I don't monopolize here. Thank you, Ginger. Uh, the lady? Um, I'm Becca Cawthorn, and I'm here with the, IGF, uh, sorry, the Youth IGF Project with ChildNet. And this is more of an observation that I've noticed. In quite a few of the workshops, young people are putting forward ideas that other people s don't seem to have noticed. And sometimes, I think, in some workshops, there's too much jargon that gets in the way of being able to put p points that would be relevant, but we don't realize that because we're not quite fully understanding what's happening. So I think if there's more education for younger people about the jargon that is being used, we can put more relevant points forward. Sorry, to address the point of uh, jargon, which has come over and over again, I think also the youth, we are a resource. As young people, we are a resource. Uh, for example, in my country, uh, an example is that all the advertisements are now run in Sheng. Sheng is the slang that the youth use. So if we got so involved in the processes, we could also change uh, the, the language. We could change that jargon and make the IGF speak like us instead of um, uh, complaining and um, uh, um, uh, insisting that it has to be the other way around. So uh, it's also a challenge to us that however little we know, we need to speak out however stupid we sound, and then in a few years' time, everybody will be speaking our language, hopefully. 
I think one one quick quick response to that is what can we do after this IGF to collaborate on a on a glossary on on resources that help other people as you're on the fl no you're on an early morning flight back so maybe not on the flight back yeah. but when you get a chance write up some of those things put them online in a in an Etherpad document or a Google document share them with other members of the the coalition let's build that up let's translate that let's make that a a really useful resource and as Ginger just commented to me we maybe also need to do that for our our, our adult colleagues to translate some of the things we might be saying uh, to make them accessible uh, for them to, but I think we can collaborate just, on those Just things. real quickly, you teach me to understand the things you're saying in your text messages, I'll teach you uh, the acronyms. <laughs> um, hi, I'm Matthew German, I'm also here with Chowdner, and this is just a follow-on point from what uh, Becker has said. Peter, you said, uh, what's so fantastic about the IGF is it's a multi-stakeholder event where everyone's contributing their ideas and there's so many varied ideas. Um, but what I feel, this is my first time at the IGF, is that the youth view is, as Becca said, usually the last one to be heard and usually the last one to be thought of. And I think people are kind of shying away and as much as we're here and what Nicholas said, we are more a novelty. Yeah, we're, we're having our views and we're seeing um, what we want, um, but people are kind of listening to it but not quite accepting it because it's the most not outrageous but the most awkward view and it's the one that's last considered um, so that's just an observation I had thank you uh, thank you um, is there somebody who hasn't spoken um, Vic, there's Victor and who else okay your burning question and then we'll have Titi please make them short so that uh, we can go to uh, the closing remarks from the panel um, hi, I'm Jack. I'm here with Childnet. Um, just leading on from what Connor said earlier, um, this is my first time at the IGF, and already I think it's just so beneficial for the voice of the youth to be presented at the IGF. Because um, as some have said, we are we are the ones with the fresh ideas, and I feel that we can we can assist with the development of the internet um, and make it a safer, broader tool for generations to come, so that they can appreciate the positive outlook that the internet can bring. Um, and I just feel that it's it's such a great opportunity for for um, youth to have the opportunity to come here and to speak to, you know, the coalition, the adults that that know what they're really talking about, and to get into depth with them on on subjects in question. Um, my name is Victor Capio. Um, what I'd like to say is that as youth, uh, we have a responsibility to ourselves um, to share the information. Um, two years ago, I did not know about the IGF or the IOIG for that matter. But um, when I got to know about it, I realized that there are so many people who are also interested or would be interested if they knew that there's something called internet governance because they use the internet on a daily basis. They have uh, internet on their phones and everything and nobody tells them that, hey, there's, there's, there's something that, they, this internet can, is, is governed by some process. There's some negotiations, there's some meetings. So I think, uh, from today, we need, uh, I think, taking from this conference is that we, we live here with, um, uh, with a resolve or resolution to spread the word that actually um, the internet is a space which needs to be governed and as youth, as users, we have a responsibility uh, and a stake in the management of the internet and or rather its governance. So uh, let us go out, especially if my friend from Nigeria who said that uh, Africans are not uh, you know, inv involved. <laughs> Um, you know, go out and share the information. Tell them that, hey, this internet is here and we are their users and we have a right and we have a stake and so let us take up the challenge. Let us not leave it to people who are older. And also, um, just adding up lastly is that we need to um, work together with those who are called the adults that, so that there's proper transition, uh, that uh, we don't have people who who once they leave the process are now not youth, now they're discussing other things. Let us work, let us talk to them, not talk at, so, so, so that uh, it's a more inclusive process and there's actually proper transitioning. And let us also remain young because uh, as they say, this, we need to take care of sustainable development and it involves the, few, the, the lives of the current generations and also the future generations. So if we keep on and spread the word, share the information and talk to each other. I think the internet will be a better place. Thank you. Thank you. Titi? Okay. I promise to keep it short this time. Okay, so quick wins. I firmly believe in leaving any kind of panel, particularly when they're like this, with quick wins. Um, one of the things that has helped in the past is not waiting but showing a can-do attitude. So obviously there is a problem with the website. 
It's something we can fix. Half of the time we fiddle around online anyway. So what can we do as young people to help the IGF website look better and make it more interesting, particularly for our generation? That's a quick win. Second thing is if there was a party, you know how we announce parties on Facebook and you're expecting 50 people and you get 5,000? OK, so let's spread the word. This is, these are things that we, it can, we can do immediately. It, it's not as easy. I, for one, know that the Secretariat currently is one person. One person. The IGF Secretariat is technically one person right now. So what can we do? There's going to be the, 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 mem the advisory group meetings and the open consultations next year. What can we push? Well, how can we use social media to be able to take it forward? That's a second quick win. And then the third is identify the aspect, uh, uh, the theme. There are five themes within the IGF. Identify the particular one you have an interest in or a subset of it. And then get down to knowing everything there is to know about it. And like you said, I was also going to mention what had, um, um, what had been said earlier that one of the first things we had to do before the first uh, WISIS was we took all the jargon, everything we couldn't understand, we took it and we reinterpreted it and then we published a little booklet where understanding the WISIS process and so you get it. This is how you lobby. This is how you do interventions, literally making it understandable for us. At the end of the day, we realized that more of the adults actually used it than we did. So those are some quick wins that we can get to in, and they're not resource intensive. And please leverage Jinja. Diplo is really good. Thank you. Paul, do you have something? It's just a question that uh, John Paul wanted to share, uh, and I'll just read it quickly for you. He's saying that uh, we have spoken about the impact of capacity building programs in IG on youth participation. During the first five-year mandate, the IGF Secretariat and other organizations conducted various capacity building programs that targeted youth from developing countries. What did the program have on developing nations? I wonder if there's time to answer this. Uh, somebody will take it from the panel. Ali, really short. There's a problem with bringing kids here because of money. Uh, if we could get other stakeholders to bring kids, I'm here uh, from the private sector. The private sector has a ton of money. Why not get them to bring on young entrepreneurs? Why not get the government to bring people, you know? And why not get Syracuse to bring people? All these places have a ton of money. That might help. A Sorry challenge to Syracuse, among other people. <laughs> OK. Um, now we'll have the parting shot uh, from the panelists. I hope uh, in their parting shot they can be able to address the main question of the, um, of the workshop. Is the youth factor counting in internet governance and uh, is internet governance affecting the youth? We'll start with Kelly. So um, I think my one comment um, kind of from leaving here today um, and after this spirited discussion is I hope that um, we're all going to leave with with concrete steps in mind. You know, I feel like we've talked a lot of, about a lot of really big and broad sort of things. And so maybe it's an opportunity for us to think individually <clears throat> about steps that we can take to involve more youth, uh, to change the culture if that's an issue, or to think about the things that we've, we've talked about and, and take those steps um, individually to, to try to make changes in that way. Thank you. I hope somebody in the panel will also um, address the question from Jean-Paul because, um, okay. Tim. Uh, so simple answer, yes and yes, but there's a lot more to do. Uh, what is there more to do? Well, I think the follow-up matters. Uh, as Kelly said, last year on my, the, my flight back from the IGF, I started writing notes that became a submission I put into the open consultations. There was text that made it into the final statement. Uh, some point in the last year, I put a Google document online and proposed a workshop and had others collaborating in that key to the YCIG uh, list. So three follow-ups. One, press release this to communicate as soon as you get back. Send a press release to someone to tell them that you've been here. I'm sure media in all sorts of areas will pick that up. Uh, young people participating in IGF, we start building an awareness of it. Uh, submit text to influence the process, whether that's a workshop uh, draft or sent to the YCIG list, and share what you're doing to collaborate. The smallest idea shared uh, through those mailing lists and other spaces really helps us uh, build a community who can collaborate on making uh, the Youth Fact account even more in future IGFs. 
So certainly not. Why are you talking about youth here? <laughs> no, just joking. Uh, I'm sure uh, you all agree it, it counts and it's still counting. And uh, I, I was thinking to close with just a, a small uh, also, a small note, a small history. Uh, once uh, I, I teach for the first year in law school, so uh, they have between 17, 18 years old. And once one of the students asked, uh, what changes when you grow up? Uh, do you think different? And I was surprised by the question. <laughs> After I got overcome that, that surprise, uh, I could realize the thinking Yes, we learn, we, we change some, some of the ideas, but the main thinking, the core, doesn't change. What do you, you see today, by the time I had 17, 18, to now, is the same. What changes is sometimes, and uh, certainly it's the, the maturing process, uh, you see some ways to go forward, you, you change your way to act, maybe you're not so impulsive, maybe you can see more the big picture, but uh, this is the core that you should keep alive in yourselves. Okay, just don't don't miss it. And just to, to address uh, one of the, the issues about the, for example, the, the website and what can be done, just to also to close with a concrete issue. Uh, I don't think we can change the, the, the IGF uh, website because we also need to, to learn that we are in somehow uh, in, under the UN umbrella. We are not the UN system per se, the, the core, uh, Union insistent, but we, we need to follow some procedures. That's why we have these badges and we have security and so on. So uh, we, we also need to, to learn that not everything can be said on the name of UN and so, so on. But we can use the, the youth website. I think Tim worked on that. There is the blog, there is so many future, uh, f features tools there that can be used and uh, it's for you. <laughs> this is not, uh, we are saying about the, the youth coalition, but this is yours coalition. So jump in. If you wanna create another space, just do it. If we can help, just say, and you got money that, uh, were uh, <laughs> offered here, take it. <laughs> so that, that's my closing remarks. Uh, I hope you, you enjoy this panel as much as I did. <laughs> Thank you, Raquel. Mr. President? Apologies for going in and out, Mother Nature called. Um, First of all, thank you very much for all these brilliant inputs because it really opened my eyes in some aspects that I wasn't aware of that is a problem for you. But from my perspective, what it all comes down to is two credos that we believe in the European Youth Forum. First is that young people need to be involved in everything that uh, directly affects them. Uh, secondly, that, well actually there are three. Secondly, I heard again and again, young people are the future. We agree, but we also disagree. We believe that young people are the present and therefore need to be listened to now. And as such, in order to be listened to, we believe in a simple b for, with, and by young people. This is very important to us because, as I was saying in the beginning, this is all great that we come here as individuals, uh, you empower young people coming from schools, coming from elsewhere, they give great input, then they go. Uh, they might be a relay and they will link it back home and express their opinions and show their, uh, share their experience, which is of course great. But the danger is that there is no continuity in that. The danger is that if you create another one website or then another one, another comes with a similar idea that maybe has been explored in the past, didn't work, you're missing opportunities. So therefore you need to synthesize these things and therefore, you need to create one sort of structure. It doesn't have to be very heavy, the structure. And I think the Youth Coalition can work for that purpose. But for example, in Europe, we have seen that our voices can only be heard if we are strong. We used to have four different platforms at European level that were claiming to be the voice of young people. We merged them 15 years ago into one. And now, actually to counter our colleague from uh, the Council of Europe, we are, I am asked to and consulted on policy directly. We have something called structured dialogue at European level with the, within the EU. We have something called co-management for young people within the Council of Europe, where we are directly asked to contribute. But again, this contribution needs to be channeled, 
needs to be, not in order not to take into account a different position, but in order to reflect a process, a process that then a moderator within an IGF can see, aha, uh -huh, we have a youth representative who speaks on behalf of youth because he or she speaks on behalf of those that have developed certain processes. And you can still have a young person stepping up and still having their personal views expressed. Great. But you still need to have that, otherwise you risk of not being listened to sufficiently and not being heard sufficiently. Therefore, we really need to work on sh ensuring how this could be done. It's a very long process. Uh, I'm, we have one example of this in Europe because our platform is unique in that sense at the global level. There are very few of such things that other places. In Africa, there's a Pan-African Union, but it's not really as inclusive. Um, we have a basic motto that is to empower young people to participate actively in society, to improve their own lives by representing them and advocate for their needs and interests and those of their organizations. And if we can find a similar fora or structure to do the same in internet governance, then we are on the right path. But this is going to take time and, and effort. But I think we need to have an agreement that this is something that could be useful and then see who is willing to take upon part of that responsibility. And we have actors who are here at the IGF now, who have been in the past, who have the capacity and the wish to do so. So we need to channel it. Uh, and hopefully next year we will have something in that direction. Thanks. You would have thought I had paid Jean-Paul to ask that question because Jean-Paul knows as well as anyone that capacity building has changed the world of internet governance. And to give it a usual short answer, I would ask you to please stop by the Diplo booth, pick up a book called Emerging Leaders. There you can see just some samples of things that that young people who have taken capacity building programs have done and are doing. Jean-Paul himself is a tutor for Diplo Foundation. He is changing Africa. Grace is changing the face of internet governance. Raquel is changing the face of internet governance. The ISOC ambassadors and the next generation leaders who are going through capacity building programs are changing internet governance. So there, it. it John Paul's question doesn't even, it has an answer. There's a book on it, go down and check it out. I would like to invite you, uh, while you're down there, to get the, and I have the address, I will give it to you. Diplo Foundation also has a social network dedicated to IG issues, and I invite you to join us. Um, we have two questions here. Has the youth uh, affected IG? Youth has already affected the IGF. You are here, you are changing the IGF. Yes, you have. So on an institutional level, you have affected IG. You have affected on an organizational level because you have affected Diplo Foundation where I work and you will do so more as I take your comments into consideration during this next months and I hope you will have more input with me. You have an effect, have already had an effect on me on a personal level as you've changed me. So on every single level, yes, youth is and has and will affect internet governance. What I have to say most importantly is I hope you will have even more because we need you and we know it. You can take one quick look at what my generation, well, our generations did with cable TV. You cannot just pick what program you want. You have to pick a package. There is no net neutrality on cable TV, and we didn't know about it. We didn't find out about it. We didn't learn about it. And we are stuck with no neutrality on cable TV. You guys can make sure that doesn't happen to the internet. So pick up the ball where we dropped it. Thank you. Thank you, Ginger. Um, in conclusion, uh, what has really come out of this workshop is that, um, first of all, youth are a resource. Uh, like I said, uh, there, are no quest uh, there are very few questions asked in this workshop. It was more about contribution because everybody uh, has some knowledge to share uh, with the rest or some experience to share with the rest. We hope that this experience can be taken to other workshops because as we've heard over and over again, the youth ha also have to be involved in the issues, yeah, and not just in discussing 
youth matters you also have to get involved in the in the issues and uh, thankfully the IGF is divided into five issues and you can take your pick uh, whatever interests you um, we also have to uh, be more uh, participatory in the other processes that support the IGF um, I am a member of the non-commercial users constituency of ICANN I hardly participate because I'm still learning the the ICANN jargon but I have challenged myself like I've been challenged by uh, Becca from Chalnet so um, um, we also have to participate in those processes. Raquel uh, mentioned a few of these, the regional IGFs um, and, and other processes. And then um, since we know something about uh, IGF, we already have a responsibility to mentor others. We cannot just uh, talk about mentoring as if it's um, somebody else to do it well. Of course, Diplo, uh, we have to ask you to keep on doing it, and, and ISOC and ChildNet and the other players. But we can also do something about that. We can also mentor others and teach others the little um, that we already know. So um, in conclusion, I'd like to thank you so much for coming to this workshop, and also um, uh, inform you that through the uh, Youth Coalition, which our team is a member of, will um, present a report of this workshop to the last session of the IGF, the Taking Stock, and uh, we would like to call upon you to come and support it. Uh, we, this will happen tomorrow. Thank you so much for coming.